directed by Om Raut, Adipuru starring Prabhas, Kriti Sanon and Saif Ali Khan in the lead roles, is finally released on Netflix. So we thought in this video we will talk about major faults of the film that became the main reason for which the film failed to deliver despite having one of the most well-known stories as its inspiration. Our spoiler warning is in order as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the film. So without wasting any more of your time, let's jump straight into the video. And yeah, while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. It helps us a lot. Thank you and let's move on. Moviegoers who believe that Lord Rama looks more like Jesus than a Hindu deity have criticized the portrayal of the character in the film. On social media, this issue has generated a lot of contention, discussion and debates. The argument over Lord Ram's appearance has intensified the criticism of the movie's production and the authenticity of the source material. Ravan's hairstyle which drew criticism for resembling some Instagram influencers was another source of contention among fans. Viewers did not like the resemblance because they thought it diminished the character's authenticity. People also took issue with the film's portrayal of Lord Hanuman. One particular aspect of Hanuman that drew criticism was the way he mimicked the classic representation of the god by seeming to hold air in his mouth. The viewers did not respond favorably to this creative decision because they thought it was unrealistic and took away from the character's classic depiction. The audience and Ramayana devotees immediately took note of the epic's gloomy, depressing and repetitive visualization. Typically, the emotions of the characters range from enraged to angry. In this adaptation, the Mayada Purushottam Ram is reduced to a motivation-churning, posing and screaming persona. Pravas's adaptation falls short of the traditionally depicted feminine, soft and extraordinarily bright features of most Indian deities. It doesn't look like the man-god he is portraying due to his bloated feast and his pointless tears are also ineffective. Sunny Singh's portrayal of Lakshman doesn't have the warrior-like appearance. There are no distinguishing features between Lanka and Ayodhya, two significant cities in the narrative. Umrao reimagined Lanka as a plastic version of Dragonstone that was less expensive and the modeling is unoriginal. Even Ravan's ride is a cheap imagination of Yugosako's original rendering from Ramayana The Legend of Prince Ram. Anyway, the remaining geographical locations are distinct and simple to tell apart. The CG characters are mostly realistic, but when they move their limbs, everything breaks down. Lord Hanuman wears a tactical vest that resembles suspenders, but the reason it was introduced to his character was not explained to us. The demon's designs are also simplified by the heavy use of leather and the color black. Even Indrajit, who has numerous tattoos, is terrible. He seemed to be getting ready to drop the upcoming Chartbuster Deep song in Lankan history. Finally, Ravan, I mean Umrauth, should have taken into account how the gods of Egypt received criticism for portraying the gods as significantly more powerful and bigger than the average person. In this instance, Saif Ali Khan's Lankesh appeared to be a villain straight out of the One Piece manga. The relationship between Ram and Sita was sensationalized in the film and upset viewers expressed their displeasure with how it was portrayed. As viewers felt it exaggerated certain aspect of a sensual effect, the portrayal of the relationship was criticized. The unnecessary songs and almost dance sequences in Sunflower Fields, which by the way were introduced to India as an oilseed crop in 1969, became cringeworthy sequences and lacked the virtuous nature of the relationship. Though Kriti Sanon's character turned out to be the only redeemable character in the entire film. Additionally, netizens criticized the movie for its poor costume choices because it showed Ravan wearing t-shirts and leather which were deemed historically incorrect for the Ramayana time period. Many viewers drew attention to this discrepancy, highlighting the misalignment between the costumes in the movie and the period it purported to depict. Also, Lord Hanuman in a leather strap goes exactly against the feet that enraged the audience even more. The dialogue for this movie was written by Manoj Muntashir, who is also the songwriter. The dialogue practically becomes indistinguishable when compared to any Bollywood B-grade film from the 1980s. Even some of the dialogues have echoes of Mithun Chakravarti's Bulla, I mean Kunda, a 1919 film directed by Kanti Shah. Bulla. Another reason why the common people rejected the movie was Muntashi's hypocrisy. He has been outspoken in his opposition to the Bisharam Rang controversy where his own script unintentionally offended many religious people more than the contentious song did. He did this by using slang and colloquial language to convey the emotions of the characters which offended those who worship the religious figures. The film's abrupt shift in tone from Tapori to passionate Sanskrit or Hindi along with the romantic track in Udu does not help either. Even in the interviews, Muntashi's hypocrisy is evident as he attempts to defend the movie by saying that it is a faithful adaptation of the Ramayana, 
But as soon as it was released, he quickly changed his position, saying that the dialogues were modernized because he wanted to appeal to as many young people as possible. कि रामायण का जो पहला मिशन है, पहला मकसद है, वो लोगों तक पहुंचाना है, दूर तक पहुंचाना है, जो सनातन के बारे में कुछ बात करे और बच्चों तक पहुंचे, penetrate करे, उन तक पहुंचे. But I'm not sure in which universe Adi Purush's dialogues are relatable. तेल तेरे बाप का, आग तेरे बाप की, कपड़ा तेरे बाप का, जलेगी भी तेरी बाप की. Pokhara in Nepal has joined Kathmandu in outlawing the showing of any Hindi movies in the city's movie theaters. No Hindi film will be permitted to screen in Kathmandu metropolitan city, according to Kathmandu Mayor Balinder Shah. Until the dialogue Janki is the daughter of India in Adi Purush is removed both in India and Nepal. It is thought that Sita, who is referred to as Janki in the movie, was born in Janakpur in southeast Nepal. The fact that Sita was never taken to the battlefield, in contrast to what was depicted in the film, was highlighted by numerous netizens as a historical error in the film. Viewers began debating these historical inaccuracies, raising doubts about the film's adherence to the Ramayana's original story. Sita is kidnapped by Ravan in the epic, and he transports her to Lanka in Pushpak Vimana. However, Saif Ali Khan's Lankesh in Adipurus kidnaps Janki and forces her to fly on a black bat-like bird. Furthermore, in the text, Lord Ram was not present when Ravan took Sita. Instead, it was Jatayu who told him what had actually happened. However, the movie shows Lord Ram as helpless when Lankesh kidnaps Janki. Jatayu was originally a vulture, and it is still unknown why they changed him into an eagle. After watching Adi Purush, I'm not sure how Nitesh Tiwari's Ramayana adaptation will turn out, or whether will it ever be made or not. But one thing I'm pretty clear about is that without having Raja Mouli or Bhansali at the helm of the executive producer, no film director should touch our epics, as it only ruins it for the people who are yet to explore Indian culture. Hey hey hey! Thank you for watching this video. Do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience of watching Adi Purush on Netflix. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema series. See you at the next one. And for the timing, we're signing off. Jai Sri Ram, Chalegi Bhi Teri Lanka Hi, and I'll be back.